question is, is soy good for me? Is soy bad for me? Should I be eating soy? So let's just get into it and talk about some of the issues surrounding soy and whether we can come to a conclusion about whether or not we should be eating soy. So why is it that the soybean gets so much attention? The big deal surrounding soy is encapsulated in a unique chemical that soy contains. And that chemical is called isoflavone. And isoflavones contain what we call phytoestrogens. And phytoestrogens or the plant estrogens look chemically very very similar to estrogen but it's important to note that phytoestrogens are not estrogen. They're about a thousand times weaker than the natural estrogen in the human body. Why are phytoestrogens so important? Well because they look so similar to estrogen chemically they can actually bind to estrogen receptors in the body. They can prevent estrogens from binding to that particular receptor and they can sort of mimic the action on a weaker level of estrogens. So when we talk about the phytoestrogens, what we're really trying to figure out is whether or not the phytoestrogens contained in soy mimic estrogen in a good way or mimic estrogen in a bad way. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the benefits of eating soy. Number one, within the first three to five years of menopause, a woman loses between three to five percent of her bone mass each year. So it can actually help to prevent and slow some of that bone loss to help bone be stronger. So that's a good thing about soy. Phytoestrogens, like estrogens, are also protective for the heart. Women, for example, after menopause, have a higher risk of heart attacks. That's because before menopause, the estrogen was protecting them against the heart attacks. But once they go through menopause, they don't have that protective effect anymore. The phytoestrogens in soy are protective in the same way as estrogen. So eating soy can decrease the risk for heart attacks. So now let's talk about some of the concerns associated with soy. So what can we say about soy and infertility? Well, um, in terms of human studies, there are very few human studies on the effect of soy on fertility in men, for example. But what we do know is that in Asian men, there seems to be no problem with fertility in Asian countries and they consume the largest amount of soy. But um, I do wanna tell you though that in many of the animal studies looking at fertility, there have been found sort of a decreased fertility, but it's sort of, uh, we can't really say the same for humans. Okay, so what can we say about soy and cancer? It turns out that high levels of estrogen in the body can increase risk for cancer, and this is something that's well known. So what about the phytoestrogens? Well, um, the studies don't really show that soy or the phytoestrogens contained in soy um, increase risk for many of these cancers. But here's something that I want to share that you may or may not know. Many of the studies that are done looking at the relationship between soy and cancer are actually done in Asians. What we've been finding is that the protective effect of soy may really be greatest if you are exposed to it at an earlier age. So if you grew up eating soy, your body may become more accustomed to it and therefore provide you the beneficial effects of eating soy. What I really wanna get across is that what's good for one person or good for one group may not necessarily provide the same beneficial effects for another group. And I really want you to listen to me carefully. The beneficial effects of soy, the phytoestrogens, may really be contained in a specific chemical, and this is called equal. But the thing about equal is that not everyone can produce that byproduct when they eat soy. Equal may really be the key in whether or not soy is protective or detrimental. It turns out that a majority of Asians are equal producers and only about 33% of Westerners are equal producers, even though this number is higher in vegetarians. What does this even mean? At the basic level, it means that not everyone metabolizes or deals with soy 
the same way. We have been bombarded with soy in this society since we found out soy has so many beneficial effects. I know of women, for example, who they found that when they've eaten a lot of soy, they tend to have longer menstrual periods, they tend to have spotting, they tend to have some issues that they never really had before and they're able to sort of trace it back to soy and what they found is that when they stop eating soy, some of these issues go away. If you're seeing any changes related to your reproductive health that you never really had before, Sort of take inventory to see if you may be consuming a lot of soy because that may be an indication that your body may not be um, metabolizing it as it would for other women. And the basic principle that I go by is that too much of anything, even good things, can really turn out to be detrimental for you. So for me, I actually don't buy soy anymore. Some practical tips, what I do, instead of buying soy milk, I buy almond milk or cashew milk. Also, when I use a plant-based butters, I tend to get the soy-free version. Earth Balance has a soy-free version of that. If I buy a plant-based cheese, for example, Daya doesn't have soy in it. And I really just try to be mindful because I think we may be really overloading our bodies. I'm not saying don't eat soy ever and don't put it in your diet, but what I'm saying is just be mindful because the research on a scientific level is really very early in order to determine whether or not it's good for Westerners and those who may not have grown up with soy to really be consuming it in such large amounts. So, is soy good for me? Is soy bad for me? I don't know. It depends. As I presented it today, it really depends on how your body is set up to metabolize soy or to deal with soy. If you are not a person who deals with soy very well, it may not be the best thing for you. So I would just really say, listen to your body. If you see any changes that you didn't have before that you think may be linked to soy, then kind of cut it out your diet and see if you see any changes. I know that as vegetarians, we tend to eat a lot of soy and this may turn out to do more harm than good. And on this channel, I'll be showing you a lot of recipes that do not contain soy because I don't really buy soy. So if you're concerned about that, take a look at some of my other recipes as well. If you want to know, well, what do I eat if I don't eat soy? Take a look at some of those other recipes and I'll really be putting some more out there for you to try. All right, so I hope this has been helpful, guys. I know I just added my two cents in there. You probably knew many of these things already. Um, but feel free to share your comments and yeah, we'll talk next time.